Hi, and welcome to another video tutorial about C Sharp and Visual Studio Express 2010. In this video tutorial, we're going to cover if statements. Let's fire up C Sharp Visual Express and start a new project. We're going to call this project Program 4. The if statement is used to make a decision. For instance, we want to check whether a value is 5. And when that is 5, we want to say a different line than, for instance, when it is not 5. Let's just go ahead and make a little example. We're going to make a variable of the data type integer. And we're going to call it number 1. We're going to give it the value 5. We're going to make another integer, number 2, and we're going to give this the value 2. That's great. Now we're going to make the if statement. Start off with typing if, two parentheses, followed by two accolades. Inside the if statement, we're first going to say number 1, if that is equal to 5, that's why we use the equal signs twice. If that value is 5, then we're going to say console.writeLine it is 5. We're also going to say readLine so that we want to wait for input. Let's just test this program. Hey, that this line is being printed, well that means that this statement here is true. And if an if statement is true, then the code or code block that's between the accolades, then that code gets executed. If this would be false, this statement, then this entire statement would be blocked. This entire code block would be skipped. Besides if, we can also make use of else. And else means every other possibility. That means if number 1 is not 5, so if it is 4 or if it's 3 or 1 gazillion, then we're going to execute this else block. And what's important to know about else is that we do not use parenthesis or a statement because else me already means every other option, every other possibility. Nope, it is not five. Five. If it would set number one to three, and I'm going to run my program again, it's going to say nope, it's not five. Instead of saying is equal to, we can also say not. Not means number one is not five. So if it's three, in this case, it's correct, it's true. number one has the value of three number one is not five and that's correct because it is three so we're going to say it's not five if I'm going to say is not three then this value is false because the number one value is three so that this time it means it is three okay We have another one, larger than. If number one is larger than three, then say la. Otherwise, just say boo. What do you think will happen now? We're saying boo. And why is that? 
because number 1 has the value of 3. And we're saying here, if number 1 is larger than 3, which is not the case because they're equal, then we're going to either write blah, then we're going to write blah. But since that is not the case, we're going to write boo. If it would be larger than 2, and 3 is higher than 2, then it is blah. Wow, that's awesome. It may seem simple, maybe not to everyone, but it's really important to understand the if statement. The larger than and the smaller than, which also exists. And also the smaller than and equal to. So what does this one mean? Number one is smaller than two or equal with two. I'm going to delete this line, we're not needing it at the moment. And at this moment, this if statement is not correct. If I would set 2 or a lower value than 2, then this if statement would be true and the console right line would put out blah. There we go. Besides if and else, we also have else if. And else if, that's actually just a second if. For instance, we want to check two statements before we go to else. If number one is higher than two, we're going to say blip. If it's equal or lower than two, then we're going to say blah. And if it is anything else, we're going to say boo. This if and then an else if followed by an else is called an if ladder. It's important to realize that we, als we always start with an if. Then it is possible to follow with an else if, but it is not per se necessary. And then we close off with an else. An else always is last, and there is always one else. There is also always one if, but else if can be used as often as you want. It is also possible that you do not use any else or else if at all. So just an if statement. Okay. Now instead of an integer, we're going to use a boolean. Boolean door closed is true. When using booleans, we have a shortcut. Instead of saying door closed is true, we can also say if door closed, if that value is true, which this is what it's actually saying, then execute this line. Else, Fell. It's going to say blah. If we set this to false, then the if statement is no longer true and we execute this line. Error FL. Okay. There's one last thing that I want to show you with if statements. And these are called There's one last thing that I want to show you with the if statements, and it's actually a summary of what we've done so far. I'm once again going to go make an integer. Number 1 is 5. I'm going to say number 1 is equal to 5. And we're going to execute this line. Else if the number is larger than 5, we're going to say Q. Else if, if it's larger, uh, sorry, if it's smaller than 5, we're going to say W. If it's not 5, 
then we're going to say v if it's smaller or equal to 5 we're going to say t if it's smaller or equal to 5 then we're going to say y when we have an if statement like this then we have an order of execution come on Let's say number one everywhere okay the first if statement we're going to check if it's true number one equals five in this case or in our case that is true so our console will write the line blah and that is also the only line we're going to print even if other else if statements are correct and that is because when you use an if letter with if and else if statements inside it then uh, the first if statement that is correct will be executed and all the other ones will be skipped so all the else ifs and even if we would have an else behind it then that one would also be skipped now let's say that here we make a little change and we set it to six so what's the next line that we're going to execute first we have else if is number one higher than five that's not the case is it is it lower than 5? That's also not the case. Is it not 5? That's also not the case. And then we have here a operator, which I didn't type correctly, I see. Here we say if it's larger or equal to 5, and which, which is true, then we're going to print t. mustn't forget to remove that line yes our output is T and that is correct let's make another summary of what which kind of conditional operators we have we have larger than larger than we have lower than we have lower than and equal we have higher than and equal we have equal, we have not, and this also covers this tutorial about operators and and this also covers this tutorial about if statements and the conditional operators. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you at the next tutorial where we're going to talk about logical operators and nested if statements. Goodbye.